friends. How are you today? I hope that you're doing really well. Um, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Miss Lisa and I get to do all of the story times at Worthington Park normally. Now, since we still can't be in the library for story times, we're doing story times right here, Come into wherever you are. Okay, let's see. This week we're gonna talk about someone who might live in your house. Hmm, do you have any guesses? It might be the person who takes care of you or helps take care of you. We are going to be talking a little bit about Father's Day because Father's Day is coming up on Sunday, but we're gonna be talking about the different people who might take care of you. It doesn't necessarily have to be your dads. A lot of us have other people that help take care of us, but we're gonna read some stories featuring dads right now. Are you ready? One of my favorite stories that came out recently about a daddy is called Hair Love. Have you seen this one before? There's a short video that goes with it too. And this is by Matthew A. Cherry and it's illustrated by Vashti Harrison. My name is Zuri, and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. Daddy tells me that it is beautiful. That makes me proud. I love that my hair lets me be me. In funky braids with beads, I am a princess. Look at her playing princess. And when my hair is in two poofs, I am above the clouds like a superhero. My hair even does magic tricks. One day, Rocky and I were playing outside when along came the rain. From large to small it went, presto, just like that. There is nothing my hair can't do. Today, I woke up extra early all by myself. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. What, who do you think Rocky is? Do you have any guesses who Rocky is? Yeah, her kitty cat. All right, ready? I wonder what the big day is. Daddy was still sleeping. Shh, I said to Rocky as we tiptoed past him. Lately, Daddy has been worn out. He makes me breakfast, takes me to school, goes to work, picks me up, and yesterday we went for a bike ride around the park. I think he needs a break. Because today is special, I want a perfect hairstyle. This calls for a professional's touch. Pause off, Rocky. Oh no, what did Rocky do? <gasps> Knocked off the tablet, oh no. Daddy heard the crash. Zuri, what on earth? He asked. Poor Daddy. He does look tired. I was only trying to help, I said. Daddy smiled. Can I help too? It'll be a piece of cake, Zuzu. The first style was a big no way. Well, I think that's still cute. Hmm. The second was no better. No, Daddy. Then Daddy tried slicking my hair back into two poofs. Ouch! Daddy yelled. Oh no, do you see what happened? One of them flew off and hit poor Daddy. Oh no. Wait a minute, Daddy said as he reached into the drawer and pulled out a pick. Ta-da! Daddy, really? I said. I'll be right back, he promised. What did he do? Look how big he made her hair. How's that? He asked, pulling a hat down over my eyes. Daddy, come on, we can do better than that. I really need my hair to be special. Don't worry, he said, we'll figure this out. Then I had a great idea. Daddy gathered all the tools we needed and we were set. Watching carefully, Daddy combed, parted, oiled, and twisted. 
funky puff buns. Pretty pretty and so much fun. Rocky approved too. I put on my superhero cape as the final touch to a perfect look. Look at that. What are they watching? That's what she was trying to do earlier, where she was trying to watch it a video to see how to do something. <gasps> Where's my Zuzu mommy called from the door? She could not get in the house fast enough. Mommy! You've got to be the prettiest Supergirl I have ever seen, she said. Look at that. So what was the special day? The special day was mommy coming home. And your hair is beautiful, Zuri. Who did it? I looked at Daddy and beamed, Mommy said. Very nice. Thank you. We learned from the best, Daddy said, as he gave her a big hug. My hair is Mommy, Daddy, and me. It's hair, love. And look, they're taking a picture at the end, and poor Caddy does not look like he likes it, huh? All right. You did a wonderful job. I know that story is a little bit on the long side, but I absolutely love it. And like I said, it was turned into a short film. I think last year it was released. Um, beautiful, beautiful short film. And the pictures in this are so pretty. So I hope that sometime you'll be able to get this out of the library or buy a copy so that you can see it on your own. Um, and that one is from Penguin. All right, let's see. I was thinking that after we did that story, maybe we should do bushel and a peck. Do you remember that song that we learned last week? Okay, I don't know if you remember, but to do I love you, we're going to put up a pinky for the letter I. We're going to put up thumb and four or er, thumb and forefinger for the letter L to represent love, and then we're going to put up thumb and pinky for Y to be you. So we need I love you. Are you ready? We'll do this every time we sing, I love you. And bushel and a peck means a whole lot and a kiss. Are you ready? I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck and a bushel and a peck. I love you. Good job. Let's do it one more time. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck and a bushel and a peck. I love you. Good job. Thanks for singing along with me. I don't like singing all by myself. I miss having my friends sing with me at story time. Let's see. I was thinking for our next story, we could do it. This one's a new one I haven't tried in story time before. And normally when I try a new one in story time, I say, hey, friends, you'll have to let me know if you like this story. If you don't like this story and it's a little bit too long for us in story time, I just stop doing it. Grown ups, it's okay to do that. If a story isn't holding your kid's attention, you don't lose any points for stopping. It's okay. All right, ready? This one is called The Big Five, and it is, by, it is written by Bella Macatini, and it's illustrated by Judy Abbott. And like I said, I haven't tried this one in story time before. So I am curious what you think about it. I really do like it. It's super pretty. Ready? Danny is staying with his grandpa for five days. He loves to look at grandpa's beautiful paintings and colorful masks. His favorite painting is a painting of five animals from Africa. Hey, how many fingers do you have on one hand? I wonder if we have the same number. I have one, two, three, four, five. Is that how many you have? Look at that. Sometimes a friend doesn't have five, but a lot of us do have five. So let's see if we can count them off as we find the animals. Those are the big five, Grandpa says. The most famous animals from my homeland. Why don't I tell you about one animal each day? Oh, that works out nicely because he's going to be there for five days, isn't he? Okay, are you ready? On Monday, that's the first day of the work week. Danny and Grandpa walked to the supermarket 
It's raining, so Danny wears his raincoat and boots. What's the first animal? Danny asked Grandpa. The first animal is so big that you can see him from a great distance, said Grandpa. He has big ears, big tusks, and a long trunk. Hmm. What do you think that might be? Big ears, big tusks, and a long trunk. Do you have any guesses? I know which animal that is, said Danny. That's the elephant. Very good, said Grandpa. Did you get it right? So smart. And you know what an elephant is good at? Stomping. I could do that too, said Danny. He stomps with his boots in a puddle. And Grandpa stomps right along with him. Can you stomp? You can stand up right where you are and stomp around. Oh, can you make really big stomps? Good job. That reminds me of the song Boots by Lori Berkner. On Tuesday, Danny and Grandpa are making crafts. Danny uses two toilet paper rolls to make binoculars. Oh, I bet you could do that at home too. What's the second animal, he asks. The second animal roars so loud that you can hear him from a distance, said Grandpa. He has a long mane, sharp teeth, and dangerous claws. Hmm, what do you think that is? With a mane and sharp teeth and a big roar and dangerous claws. I know which animal that is, calls Danny. That's the lion. Very good, says Grandpa. Do you know what a lion is good at? Jumping. I could do that too, says Danny. He jumps as far as he can. Grandpa jumps with him. Can you jump? What's, how far can you jump? That's always a fun activity to see how far you can jump and then measure it. Oh, I gave away the next page. Oops. On Wednesday, so we had Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're on the third day now. Danny and Grandpa enjoy a picnic in the park. There are three slices of cucumber left on Danny's plate. <gasps> What's the third animal? He asks. The third animal has thick skin and two horns on his nose, says Grandpa. Hmm. That one's kind of tricky. Can you think of an animal that has really thick skin and two horns on its nose? Danny thinks at our zoo, they're located really close to the elephants. That's the rhino. Very good, says Grandpa. Do you know what a rhino is good at? Grazing. Oh, I can do that too. Do you know what grazing means? It means like a lot of animals do it to grass where they'll eat at the grass. Yeah. He puts a slice of cucumber in his mouth. And Grandpa takes one, too. Look at them all. So silly. All right, we've done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The next day of the week is going to be Thursday. On Thursday, Danny and Grandpa ride to the playground. Danny sits on the back of the bike. What's the fourth animal, he asks. The fourth animal looks like a big cat, says Grandpa. He has soft fur and is covered with spots. Hmm. A big cat with soft fur and spots. Do you have any guesses? Danny thinks. That's the leopard. Very good, says Grandpa. Do you know what a leopard is good at? Climbing. Oh, I can do that too, says Danny. Danny climbs to the top of the slide. Grandpa waits for him at the bottom. Friday is Danny's last day with Grandpa. We had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Danny plays with some friends in a yard. What's the fifth animal, he asks. The fifth animal has two crooked horns above its ears and likes to be with its friends. Hmm. Do you know any animals that have two crooked ears and like to be with their friends? Or two crooked horns? Hmm. Danny isn't sure what animal grandpa means. 
His friends don't know either. Did you know? I didn't know. That's the buffalo, says Grandpa. And do you know what else a buffalo is good at? Running! We could do that too, says Danny. Danny runs across the yard and his friends run too. Can you run? You can run in place right where you are. That night, Grandpa has a surprise. He takes the painting of the big five from the wall and gives it to Danny. You may visit, take this painting home with you. And when you're bigger, we'll visit the land where I come from together. Wow, says Danny. Thank you, Grandpa. I can't wait. That is a pretty fun story. And I did want to point out that Danny wasn't with his daddy, was he? He was with his grandpa this week. That's pretty fun. I know my kids really enjoyed their time with their grandpas. Okay, you did a fantastic job with that. I was thinking maybe you would like to do a song about the days of the week after that. Now there's a couple days of the week songs, but we're going to do one where you snap. I'm not good at snapping. Can you snap? I'm really bad at it, aren't I? It's okay though. I keep practicing. I'm getting a little bit better. To snap, you put to your thumb against one of your fingers and then you make it snap off of there. Yeah. I also am not good at whistling. We all have different skills. All right, so this song if your parents are like me and they remember old TV shows, this tune might sound familiar. Ready? Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Ready? There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week. All right. So grownups, you can work on your days of the week. I know that sometimes I'm feeling like I don't know what day it is or what month it is or what season it is because this is all just such an unusual time, isn't it? But you can work on days of the week. You can do a calendar at home. Put a little calendar time into your day. See if that helps you keep track of where you are. All right. Let's see. I have another favorite story about a daddy. This one is called Nellie New and Daddy Too, and it's by Anna Dudney. If you know the Llama Llama books, Nellie New is Llama's neighbor. Nellie loves her daddy New. A New is an animal, by the way, kind of close to a llama. He always knows just what to do. A great big box, some tape and string. Daddy can make anything. Look at them. They like to work together. First they measure, then they draw. Nellie tapes and Daddy saws. Saws probably should be done by Daddy. Yeah. And then they add a little glue. Nellie and her Daddy knew. Do you have any guesses what they're making? Hmm. A perfect little house for one. But Nellie thinks it's not quite done. It needs some flowers, just a few. Time to shop with Daddy New. They're about to go to one of my favorite places. A big adventure to the store. Plants and hammers, ladders, more. Would she like a better view? Take a ride on Daddy New. Where are they? Do you know what that place is called? Hmm. It's a hardware store. I loved going to the hardware store with my daddy when I was little. I love that place. I love it so much that when my husband and I got married, he worked at one for 10 years. It's one of my favorite places. More colors than she's ever seen. Purple, yellow, pink, and green. Ooh, the paint section. I love that section. Nellie finds the perfect blue Daddy gets some brushes, too. Uh-oh, do you see something that happened that Nellie might get upset about? Hmm, it might be easier to tell in person. I think we'll find out soon. 
out with daddy hip hooray it's a super duper day for nelly and her daddy new uh-oh what did she forget <gasps> she ran back and got him daddy where are you oh no <gasps> have you ever been lost in a store oh that looks so scary and she doesn't see her daddy anywhere. I don't see her daddy, do you? Oh, wait, is that daddy? Nope, that's a giraffe. There's daddy. <gasps> oh, who found her? Swooping, zooming way up high. Daddy holds her and she flies. Guess who loves his Nelly? Who? Yes, it's daddy. Daddy knew. Time for checkout at the store. Daddy adds just one thing more. A special day for just these two, D Nellie and her daddy knew. Paint the house with brick designs, big bright flowers, climbing vines. There's nothing that these two can't do, Nellie and her daddy knew. Time for dinner. Daddy cooks, then they read their favorite books. Every night and every day, daddy makes it all okay. He always knows just what to do. Nellie's daddy, Daddy New. You did a great job with Nellie New and Daddy too. I hope that you enjoyed that one. I especially love how much they spend time together. And the thing that they're making at the end is similar to something we just made for our middle one. We made her a tree house for her bunk bed. It was really fun. And we worked on it all together, which reminds me of Nellie New. Okay, I brought something over. Hold on, are you ready? Boom, big board came to visit again. Okay, boy, this thing is big. All right, I wanted to try to sound out two different words with you. Um, these are two people who might take care of you most of the time. Let's see, let's start with that person we've been talking about today. Let's start with dad. What do you hear at the beginning of dad? D, d, dad. I hear the same sound as the beginning of dog and down. That's the letter D. To make a D, we're going to do one big line down. Oh, you can't see that very well, can you? And we're going to go back up to the top of it and we're going to go whoop, all the way around. See that? All right, so that's our first letter. Ah, ah. Now we need an ah, ah. Like ah, ah. Apple. Ooh, do you know what that letter is? That is an A. Let's see if we can write an A. We're going to go up to the middle and we're going, or the middle top, and we're going to make a line down and to the left. Then we're going to come back up to the top. We're going to make a line down and to the right. And then we're going to give it a little line across the middle. Boop. D, A. So now we have da. You know what else we need? Dad. What's that last sound, do you think? Do you have any guesses? D, A, D. Oh, it sounds the same as the first sound, doesn't it? So we're going to make another D. Let's see, we need... What was it again? We start, we always start at the top with our letters. So we're gonna start at the top and make a straight line down. Boop. And then we're gonna go back up to the top where we started and we're gonna do a big curve around to the bottom. Dad, good job. Now, if you would like to write daddy, we're gonna add another D. and a Y at the end. Y is a tricky one. Just like A. A and Y are not some of the first letters you learn unless they're in your name to write because writing those diagonals is really hard. That takes a lot of time to get good at. All right. I was thinking of the other person who might take care of you. Let's sound out mom. What do you hear at the beginning of mom? Mm, mm, mm. M. Very nice. Now, M, we start at the top again. 
almost always, where we'll make a big line down, lift up, come back up to the top, make a line down to the middle diagonal, there you go, and then we'll come back up, and a straight line down. There's our M. Now, M, um, that one's kind of tricky. What do you hear in the middle there? M, oh, oh. Oh, I'm making an O with my mouth. So we need an O. Mm, oh, and then the last letter that we need is going to be oh, mom. Same as the beginning. What letter was that? Do you remember? An M. So we'll make our straight line down, little line to the middle, little line back up, straight line down. Very nice job. And to make this one mommy, oh, let's see if I can make enough space. We're going to need another. Ooh, oh, I did that wrong. Did you see that I started at the bottom just after we talked about starting at the top all the time? I know. Grown-ups make mistakes, too. That's okay. That's how we learn, and that's how we grow, and that's how we get better. All right. And then mommy sounds the same at the end as daddy, so I need a Y. Boop. Mommy. Good job. If you have other words that are important to you, like daddy and mommy, you can work on sounding those out. Like if you need nana or papa or grandpa, whoever takes care of you, you can work on writing their names, just like we worked on daddy and mommy. Whew, you did a really good job. That was pretty tricky. Are your arms feeling a little bit tired or your fingers? Did you practice writing too? Let's see. I was thinking that maybe if your fingers were a little tired after that practice writing, maybe we should give them a little stretch. And earlier we counted to five on our fingers. So let's do one from the left. We're going to put our hands behind our backs. Are you ready? All right. And we're going to pull out one finger at a time. Ready? And this is a song by Jim Gill. One from the left and one from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Whoop-de-doo. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those two, see how we had two fingers up? Good job. All right, now we're gonna pull two from each side, ready? Two from the left and two from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Snips Galore. Can you cut like scissors? Then they said goodbye and walked away, all four. Okay, we did one and two. What are we going to do next? Three from the left and three from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called finger mix. That one's tricky. Can you go in between? Good job. Try to change it. Good. Then they said goodbye and walked away. All six. Good job. So we have three and three gives us six. And now we need four from the left and four from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called bend and straight. Can you bend them all the way over like they're bowing? Then they say goodbye and walked away. All eight. All right. What's going to be next? Last one. Five from the left and five from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called clap and clap and clap and clap again. Then they said goodbye and walked away all ten. Good job. If you ever want to do that with Mr. Jim Gill, it's a much better video than watching Miss Lisa do it, and you can find it online at, I think it's jimgillmusic.org. It might be jimgill.org. All right, let's see what our next thing is. I had one more little story I wanted to do. This one's pretty fast, and it's very silly. Are you ready? This one's called, Oh, Daddy, and it's by Bob Shea. Oh, Daddy. This Daddy uses a very silly concept that I like to do a lot of times where he pretends he doesn't know something. It's pretty tricky. Are you ready? 
I may be little, but I am as smart as any, as two eight-year-olds. I am so smart, I even show my dad how to do things, and he's a grown-up. In the morning when I'm busy getting dressed, he asks, look, is he busy getting dressed? He's not getting dressed. He's sitting there watching TV. Is this how you get dressed? Wait a minute. What's that daddy doing? He's so silly. Oh, daddy. Is that how you get dressed? No. This is how you get dressed. Wait a minute. That was super fast once he decided to do it, wasn't it? Then when we're late to grandma's, he asks. Wait a minute, is the little one listening? No, he's chasing a butterfly. Is this how you get in the car? Oh, daddy. This is how you get in the car. See, easy peasy, mac and cheesy. Oh, and look, he even did his buckle. Wow. That's pretty hard to do. Even when I'm eating lunch, I have to stop and help my dad. Wait a minute, is he eating lunch? No, he's playing in the drawers. Is this how you eat carrots? Oh, daddy. This is how you eat carrots. <gasps> Was daddy being sneaky again? He got him to eat his carrots. Sometimes I tease Daddy, like when he was watering the flowers. Is this how you water the flowers, he asks. Is that how you water flowers? Daddy, this is how you water flowers. Oh, no. Don't give a kid the power of the hose. And no matter how many times I show him, he always needs help with big hugs. Is this how you'll get big hugs? Oh, no. Oh, Daddy. This is how you give big hugs. I don't know what my Daddy would do without me. All right. I love that silly one. I hope that you liked it, too. I had some ideas I thought you might like to try at home this week. Um, if you remember our book, The Big Five, I was thinking it might be fun if you want to make a Play-Doh zoo so you can make the animals out of Play-Doh or you can bring in some of your Play-Doh or your animal toys and put them into the Play-Doh. I always love doing a combination of like Play-Doh for the ground and the trees and stuff and popsicle sticks to help make the habitats more exciting um, and then bringing in some of our play animals so you can see if you have the big five or if you can make them out of Play-Doh at your house. I was also thinking it might be fun to try a new hairdo, like in our hair love book. So you could try a couple new hairdos. Even if you have shorter hair, you could probably find some new ways to try to do it. And I was thinking it might be nice if you want to make a card or a present for Father's Day. You can make something for your grown-up that takes care of you. And I want you to practice writing dad or mom or whatever the name is of who takes care of you in your card. I would love to see that because remember we practiced it on the big board and I was also thinking it might be fun to try something new together with your grown-up. You could try uh, going for a picnic. You could try making something together. I wouldn't probably suggest going to the store together just yet but if you have to go to the store maybe you could find something new and exciting there. Um, you could also try going to the zoo, maybe sign up for a spot and get some zoo time in. See if you can find all five of the big five. I don't think we have all five of them at our zoo, though. I think we have a couple of them. And then I was also thinking it might be nice. Maybe you could do this as your present for Father's Day or just as a gift for the person who takes care of you. But you can draw a picture of you and your grown-up. I don't know if you remember... It was last week, a couple weeks ago, we talked about writing some things that you love about that person. This would be a great chance to do that. All right, friends, that's all I have for you. I hope that you are having a fantastic time with your grown-up. Uh, keep watching as we keep rolling out new things at the library. And also, if you haven't signed up for Summer Reading Club, you should. You should sign up for Summer Reading. It's all online. You'll track it at home, and then you bring in what you read 
or you bring in your tracker and you can pick up a book that's all yours to keep. And we're doing that even though the library is closed, you'd be able to get it, okay? All right, I miss you, my friends, and I hope I will get to talk to you soon. Bye.